Hello everybody, I am Christian Chiller. Welcome to a learning live stream. The first of a new series of live streams for me. If you saw one on Monday, you were mistaken. <laughs> I did try one on Monday, something went a bit wrong. So I'm starting again from today, a Wednesday. Um, so I'm changing the way I do my streaming a little bit in that I am going to have this very specific learning live stream a couple of times a week, actually, depending on my availability, covering a bunch of different subjects. And I'll be looking at a whole wide gamut of things that interest me. And then what I learn in those live streams, I might turn into videos or blog posts or, or something else at some point, but not completely sure what I'm going to do with what I learn. But um, it's always nice to have people join you when you are learning. And it gives me an excuse to learn, even if I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> if you are joining me for the first time, you can find more about me at christianchiller.com. And wherever you are watching, you can also leave a comment, say hi, subscribe, etc., etc. I have the chat open. So if you join now or later, say hi. I haven't really made any assets for this new live stream yet. I'm still sort of easing into it. But today, what am I going to look at? I'm actually going to look at something that sort of covers um, two of my large interests, sort of technology and games. And that is Tabletop Simulator. Before we get started, I'm just going to double check that everything is working. Looks like YouTube is all good. And let's just very quickly check. Twitch is all of a new, I've got a new setup as well. I have a new camera. And I just wanna be sure everything's working. That also looks good. All right, so Twitch and YouTube are live, all ahead go. So if you're joining me there, say hi. Let's jump into a screen share. This is gonna be, it's quite a busy um, screen actually. So I do apologize for this. There we go. Tabletop Simulator. What is Tabletop Simulator? It's existed actually for some time. It became increasingly popular during all the various lockdowns of the past few years, but um, it has existed for some time actually. I think maybe nearly 10 years, to be honest with you. And it's a way of playing digital versions of board games, I, I guess other things, yeah, RPG dungeons, all sorts of other things. Um, in a digital environment. It's an application which you get from Steam. I think from other places I have it from Steam. Um, some official, some unofficial. There's lots of other options for this now. I think Tabletop Simulator was one of the first, not the first, Vassal was probably the first I know of. Uh, and there's a suite of um, official and unofficial games for it. And someone creates assets for those games. Let's actually do a quick, um, hopefully this isn't going to kill my CPU and start dropping frames or anything. Let's see. It's a little heavy <laughs> as an application. So just opening up. Everything looks so good so far. There is sound. I don't really have the sound uh, running right now. Um, Looking good. So I could play a game with other people here. I did that a bit, or I could just um, join something myself. Let's, I just want to show you what it looks like. So a single player. It is a, li a little bit weighty. <laughs> okay. I really wanted to use the microphone, but uh... all right. And here we see some of the games available. Um, I don't do game streaming very often. I just want to check it. Yeah, it all seems to be working. Yeah. So you have some classic games, DLC that you could purchase. Workshop, we'll come to that in a minute. And a whole bunch of other things. So actually, I may regret this because it might be a bit heavy, but I'm going to look at this Uprising game for a variety of reasons. This is actually a game made by some friends of mine. And I actually made my own digital version of a game I was working on some time ago for this. Oops. 
think we're getting a few dropped frames here. This is very heavy. I probably picked a very bad game to test this with. <laughs> okay, we're settling down again now. That's okay. And yes, you get a lot of game components that you can drag around. So the differences between Tabletop Simulator and some others are that a lot of the other virtual tabletops, VTTs, I think they're called quite often, are fully scripted and you can't do anything wrong. So um, you can't really take a wrong move. You can't do anything that's against the rules, etc., etc. Um, Tabletop Simulator is semi-scripted and it kind of depends what the designer has done, which is we're going to we're going to come to. So I personally know that the person who created this mod, it's quite a complex game, put a lot of work into it. So you have all sorts of things here. Um, I actually remember how to do this. There we go. We can move this around. I'm assuming we can uh, flip this if we wanted to. If it lets us, I don't think it lets us, but we could rotate it. No, it's obviously been completely locked, <laughs> but maybe we could take these cards. No, shuffle. Okay, nothing's really happening. Maybe I need to start a game first or something. It's been a very long time since I've used Tabletop Simulator. Um, I think we can have a look at the rule book. I can't actually read it. I think it's space from memory. Uh, there we go. There's the rule book, which I helped edit, actually. <laughs> it's not all about me. Uh, there we go. Um, maybe we can just... Yeah, I think this game has been so heavily scripted, I can't really just move things for the... Oh, there we go. I can. I can move a miniature here. I can zoom in. Yeah, there we go. I'm sure there's some sort of oops, no, some sort of shortcut for zooming the camera around. I can't remember what it is. Oh, hello, there we go, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You get the idea. This game has been heavily scripted. There are other, there's other examples which we could look into. Let's just get out of here. So if we looked at something a little lighter, maybe. Like, uh, say, chess. <laughs> uh, go, that'll do. Or dice. All right, dice. Why not? Yeah, random dice. So probably here we can do what we like, really. Uh, roll. We can zoom in a bit so you can see them. There's sound, of course, as well. Uh, material. We could change the material here. Yeah, you get the idea. A lot of sorts of things we can do. We can flip a coin. There we go. So that's Tabletop Simulator. But people create these, and that's what I actually want to look into. Why would you want to do that? Well, so I'm in the process of designing a game with a co-designer, Daniel, at the moment, and we're in playtesting stage. And um, we're actually using um, dry wipe cards to test some of the components, which is fine, but still, it's actually easier than constantly cutting things out to make new components, but still, um, well, firstly, there's the problem with ink. It gets wiped off, it gets on people's fingers, but also even going through those each time can take time. And we wanted to start creating a very basic prototype, and the game doesn't even have any graphical assets right now, that we could use in Tabletop Simulator for much quicker testing in our kind of own ideation phases. So that's what I wanted to look at. I have done this in the past, but it was some time ago, and uh, Pavel, who created that uh, Uprising mod, I think it's called a mod, I might be making that up, um, inspired me to, to look more in, back into creating things with Tabletop Simulator uh, to see what was possible these days. I don't think I'm going to get too far in this, this video, but um, to have a rough idea. So what I'm going to try to do is figure out how to start that here. Um, so I am not completely sure where to begin. I may actually do this from the web page first. Be. and um, resources maybe. So video tutorials, this is probably for, for using and things like that, knowledge base. So this is for the actual playing, drawing, 
player guide, host guides, custom content, asset creation. I'm wondering sort of where to begin, I think, is where I am a little unsure. Where do I even begin? I have done this before, and I can't honestly remember where I did begin. Uh, hmm. It's not immediately obvious. Scripting API. We're not quite at the scripting point yet. Host guides, custom content about custom objects, custom this, custom that. Importing mods, maybe? No. Hmm. Gain tools? No. Getting started? Um, hmm. Not immediately obvious. I did see something inside Tabletop Simulator itself. Let's see. So create. Single player, I saw something, um, actually here's the one I made, it's still in my account, I made this years ago. I'm sure I saw something about custom, I'm not seeing it. Uh, maybe? Oh, it's not immediately clear to me how I begin. I remember it was all around uh, loading assets and things like that, but where do I begin? All right, let's... Their own documentation is, is kind of failing me. I'm not sure where to start. So let's, let's resort to a search engine. Okay, there's a blog post and there's a Steam there we go, there's a few people here. Okay. So you want to be a game designer. All right, this is a little bit level above. But okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, that didn't really help. Um, Creating mods, I guess that's what we want. Yes. The basis of the game is actually a deck building game. So it could be that we start here, maybe. Let's also have a quick look at these other links just to see Okay. This isn't really helping. Yep, this is kind of the path I'm going down. Uh, still not really. Uh, create images. Ah, see the knowledge base. Okay. Aha, well, this could be useful, but how do we use it? <laughs> um, the creator of the robot deck builder, his deck builder is now bundled in the game's root and modding folder. Okay, but then what do we do? Create and modify custom decks. How exactly? Uh, games root and modding folder. What does that mean? Modding folder, maybe here. Uh, not really sure where I'm looking for this. Modding, nothing in modding. Um, 
games root and modding folder. What does that mean? His deck builder is now been bundled in the games root and modding folder. What does that mean? I'm not very sure. Let's maybe go back to one of the other tutorials. <laughs> Cards are more complicated. You need a template. That's fine. Ideally, so at the moment, a lot of our game components are in an Excel spreadsheet and we would, or in a, in a Google Docs spreadsheet, and we would probably export those out to these files somehow. For now, I won't worry too much about that. That's a whole other level. We'll just um, get some cards in. So if you have 50 cards, yeah, upload the images to the internet. Ah, so this is what we actually want here. So let's just take this template. Okay, great. This looks like a very, um, what is this? <laughs> Weird. Uh, let's, this looks like slightly low resolution, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter so right now. Click file. Need to place the front of each card on one of these numbered slots, starting with one and working away from there. So 50, fill up the first 50. And I think I remember fill on, um, in one file. I'm trying to try to remember how I did this in the past, but yeah. And it needs to be a certain size each time. And then they match up. I do remember this was always quite tricky in the past. It took me quite a little bit of effort. I wonder if I actually still have what I worked on. Let me see. You could actually just work with that if I did. Uh Still here. Let me see. I know I actually had it as an archive somewhere, but I think I deleted that. Been a very long time since I've looked in here. As you can probably see. Get the cards back. And I did them mostly in InDesign. What did I do with them? I can't even find the cards anymore. What did I do with the cards? <laughs> <laughs> Box art, card scratch, event card back. Where are the actual cards? A2 print proof. I have no idea what half of these are. It's been a very long time, as you can see. 2016 was the last time I looked at this file. Very quickly, it might be something slightly more interesting than just a bunch of numbers, but uh, I, I'm not holding out much hope. Yeah, it's highly likely. <clears throat> A2 print proof. Oh, that's the... Yeah, this this was the player aids. Oh my, it's been a very long time since I've looked at these. <laughs> this isn't quite what we want. Let's just carry on with the basics for now. Okay. So I remember there was a certain pattern to the way that the uh, cards have to be. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it says 10 by 7. Yeah, but I feel like there's some more subtlety to it than that, but we'll worry about that later. So, in this order, create, single, classic, then custom. Okay. Quitting a game is also quite slow. Create, single, custom. Why do I not see custom? <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, classic and then custom. Classic, custom. Oh, that's, I thought I saw that earlier. Yeah. 
Okay, ah, right. So now we actually need to have the cards somewhere. So we need to upload these somewhere. I feel like this was one of the biggest problems I had uh, in the past, was finding somewhere to upload these to. Um, okay, let's take this file. Let's just duplicate it. We'll make it identical. It's not going to be very interesting, but it's fine. Front and back. Uh, where can I upload them to that's going to be reliable? Um, Oh, yeah, yeah, this is actually the biggest uh, complication. Um, let's use, uh, I use this strange application called InSync for letting me use Google Drive a bit like a um, Finder folder. Let's use that. So, InSync, put it into here. Let's just, actually, this is the game. <laughs> I'm not going to give too much away by showing this. That will upload. We can now go into Drive and give it a second. And so here's the card spreadsheet. So actually, ideally, we'd want to generate it from that. I just realized now. I always forget to highlight my cursor. It really matters so much right now, probably. Yeah, and here's the old game. <laughs> so weird to, to see it again. And here they are. So we need to make those public, I would assume, that link. My concern here is that Google Drive always adds on this weird, like, interface to file download. So this may or may not be a problem. Let's see. I don't know. I've got a feeling it's going to be. So this is the back. Oh, you can also upload. Oh, after all that. <laughs> Didn't even need to do that. All right. That was his interface is sometimes a little. Uh, it's fine. I have them for later use. Where is it gone? Why can I not? There it is. Oops, sorry. Not seeing very well. Oh, old game, not current game. Uh, there we go. Okay. Mm, sure. I don't see any other way to change that. And I assume we can do. No, I just saw some red text down there in the bottom, but I don't think it's anything to do with uh, this. I don't know how much storage you get here, but. And front. Cool. Unique backs. I don't think so. Rectangle with rounded. Um, okay, I don't really. I think we just want rectangle. I don't know if that guide I'm looking at will say anything. Uh, delete everything from the. Ta okay, yeah. Probably should have done all this first. <laughs> Yeah, board image. Yeah, I don't have a board image right now. Could just upload a random image, but here we go. This is what we're interested in. So URL, check only if each card has a different back. That's actually not true. So we won't tick that. It's good, I didn't. Uh, and now here we can see the width. So this is custom. I, I feel like when I last did this, this was fixed, but we'll see. Uh, the number is number of cards in the deck. Did we make that? Um, I don't know. It was, what was it? That was, uh, 70, I'm not quite sure what hidden card means, but let's go for 70. Sideways, back is hidden. Yeah, check, okay. What does it mean? Instead of using the, my uh, cursor highlighted actually in the way, instead of using the last slot on face image for the hidden card, the back image will be used. Quite sure what that means. Um, okay. 
click import. What's going to happen? Uh, uh, I don't actually have one right now. Uh, we could add one, even though it's probably going to be a very peculiar looking board. Um, fine, let's just use the board we have right now. <laughs> it's going to look very, very weird, trust me. But let's go for it. Okay. Sure. Uh, okay, see, I told you it looked weird. And here's the deck. Okay, that doesn't look quite how I expected it to. Uh, deal. That looks like I expect, but that... Oh, it's using the file as the back. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. These look slightly cryptic, but it's fine. But that's the basics. So we could draw another card. I think I'm not sure why that's... We could shuffle. There we go. Um, we draw another card. And here you can see... You can see this is quite low resolution. But you can see here that we have the very basics of things here. And if we wanted to start adding scripting, you can add scripting here. I'm probably not going to get into the time to, to look at that right now, um, because there's a lot you can do. And we don't even have the basic mechanics of the game yet. But in theory, for example, we'd want to do things like, so this extremely um, rough prototype of this space here is where we'd actually want to put a card, for example. So you could script it so it could only go there. You could script things so that at the beginning of the game, five cards are dealt to each player or a market or something like that. That, that kind of thing is what you can do. Um, we have a little bit of time left, so maybe actually let's start looking into some of those basics. And you can start importing other assets. Uh, so cards, and for this game, cards, boards, um, tokens, I think are the main things we will need. I guess we can do that from, I know that's games. I guess we can do that from here. So we would want, um, we actually want circular pieces. Not quite checkers, no. More like, uh, none of these actually. Uh, blocks will, will do, sure. I actually want all of these. Oh, I have to do them one at a time. Can we kind of, oh, there's a pack here. No, it's not either. It seems, it feels like a very, I'm guessing that's another thing we could script is um, get like 50 or something like that. Because effectively we actually want, I don't know, 20 something for each player in a different color, something like that. And there's actually another thing. Each player will appear around the, the table here as well. We don't need any dice in this game. Miscellaneous. Bowls, all sorts of things here. You could add some little niceties to your application, to your, to your application, to your game. Random uh, figurines. We don't need a figurine, but again, we could probably come here. Yeah, and you can add. I feel like this is really opening up the trouble here, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, what have I got? I have to go for one of mine. Chillers. I'm probably going to regret this. Card scale. I don't know how that's going to look. It's probably going to look super weird. <laughs> how do we... How do I move? I feel like I remember this problem before when I was just playing games in Tabletop Simulator. I can't quite figure out how to rotate. I can't I want to go up. <laughs> no. Uh, no. No. I just want to go up. I don't know how <laughs> to go up. <laughs> so you can see that um, amazing. Well, I can just move it into shot, I suppose, would be easier. So maybe we can just put it on its side. No, that didn't help. <laughs> Uh, make it a bit bigger. 
You still can't really see it. Yeah. You still can't really see it, but you get the idea. You can see it. it's using the respecting the transparency of the of the piece as well. I kind of wanted to flip it onto its just onto its side, but there we go. So I don't need figurines for this, but I could do that. Okay, let's have a look at some basic scripting, I think. Oh, here's the tiles here. So that's the kind of thing. We're just going to use basic color tiles in this game, so it's okay. Yeah, not yet. Uh, let's think about the scripting. Uh, where do we even begin with that? Yeah, this deck builder, I have to try and find where that is. It's sort of great, but kind of hidden. Custom cards. Um, yeah, so this is going into a bit more detail. We actually are just having fairly standard playing card size cards. I think uh, bigger than the examples here. Definitely at high resolution. You get the idea here. Yeah, you have to generate this somehow. This is actually kind of the most complex part of it. I end up using Pandoc because I love Pandoc, but probably going to do something different this time. Um, yep, you get that. That's yeah, similar to what we just saw, pretty much. Yep, looks a bit nicer. Um, deck of cards. Yeah, I want to look at the basic scripting now. I don't know if there is anything. Most of these seem to be the same, but maybe it's time to dive deep into this, Oof, which I'm a little bit ominous about. But let's let's go for it. Um, where was it? Uh, okay, so I don't know why I'm now struggling to... Oh, here we go. So it is actually documented. You just have to kind of know what you want. The custom figurine, yeah. So it's more that it's like more like reference documentation. The documentation is here. You just kind of need to know what you want to do. Community guides. Still not really sure how the scripting works. Where do I find the scripting? I swear I saw something earlier. But I'm really not seeing it now. So let's go back. I think it was on the home page. Definitely saw it somewhere. Scripting API. Not quite sure. If... Okay. So a quick overview of this. Um, it's Lua. Not too much about Lua, but game is composed of one global script and zero to many object scripts. And that's pretty expected, pretty normal, and, and something to do with gaming. Um, objects, yes, resources. There's a official plugin for the Atom text editor. I think that shows it's not been updated for some time. Um, could be cool to see if I could update that Visual Studio code. I do like doing that kind of thing. Overview. Okay. You can access the in-game editor by clicking on scripting. Top bar by right-clicking on object, choosing scripting, then selecting it. Save and play. I kind of want to know what I would like to do is on game launch, deal five cards. Let's just try and accomplish that, and I'll consider that a good start. Um, but I don't really know where to start with that. So... Where do we begin? Base, maybe. Mm. This does something. We want more of an event. Uh, events. Universal, global. Chat, load. Mm. Oh, 
what start? Not sure. What? Between this. Search start. Collision into search start. Hmm. Table. No. Place, maybe. Dish. Okay. Let's let's maybe go to search again. I wonder if we can I have to keep typing tabletop soon if I can type TS would be nice. Could look at those examples as well, I guess. Need a lot of tutorials here, which is good. Uh, ah, function on load. Okay, cool. <laughs> this is a start anyway. Um, script rolling a dice when the mod loads the game. Right click on a single dice. Ah, so you assign it to the object. So I put it on the deck, I guess. Let's see. Okay. I hope this is visible. I can barely, <laughs> barely read it myself. <laughs> um, function on load. Okay. Self randomize. I assume that is. Actually, it's not quite right, is it? We want to deal. Um, uh, deal, maybe? It's also knowing what the terminology is in each case. Deals and offset. Deals from a deck to a position relative to the hand zone. Okay, this could work. We have to know the player colors. I guess I am, I don't know what color I am. Uh, is that my color? Yes, white, okay. So what does that mean? Let's have a look. That means, okay, how many? Two cards. What is this minus two and two though, is what I'm slightly confused about. Well, let's try. Okay. Error. <laughs> oh, I don't think. Yeah, we need an end, don't we? Uh, we saw that in the example here. End. I don't know if it matters about the space. Well, that did something, but we got an error. That actually worked. Uh, I'm quite sure. There you go why they're like that, but it worked. Um, I wonder if there's a way to simulate like a reload or something. Um, you can always just, is this saved? How do I save it? I can't quite remember. Uh, I'd rather not go through all over again. <laughs> if there's a way to we can just keep going in and yeah so that is working we have yeah cool that actually does work uh, I don't know how quite how we determine which players which and all this kind of stuff but we're getting the rough idea so that is a possibility and we could have something like each turn 
uh, want to have a market to the market refreshes and things like that. And she gets quite complicated. I mean, you don't have to do scripting at all. You can leave it just completely open like this, especially for early playtesting, when you don't really want to waste all your time on just writing scripts that are just for you. But that's the principle that you um, could script it for the help of other players. But just whilst you're playtesting, you can just do it manually, of course. It can get a bit fiddly. So yeah, we'll just do, there are short keyboard shortcuts. Yes, I thought it was just F, there we go, etc. Um, so what I want to double check is how we now save this, um, resume. Uh, no, I want to, I guess, is it, is it just saved? <laughs> Seems like a, a really basic requirement. Uh, not that I've really got very much I'm too afraid of losing, but um, let's see. Uh, it's a start. Ah, here's the global as well. Ooh, UI. XML UI. So I think there's a whole bunch of things we can do here. So here's the UI as well. XML UI. What is that? Um, or UI API introduction. What could we do there? Custom UIs to support your game. Cool. Can't quite fathom. What, oh, there's probably like creating player aids, maybe text. Oh, I see. Example score sheet, splash screen, collapsible dice, etc. etc. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So there's a lot you can do. And as we saw from that example, get quite complicated. I wouldn't mind having a look. There was somewhere on one of these various links we followed. So that's a script. I wouldn't mind seeing. There was somewhere, somewhere, somewhere on one of these posts. Uh, Somewhere there was an example that you could look at. I, I don't know where it is now. I can't seem to find it. It'd be interesting to see how it all comes together. I don't actually know um, if not everybody probably protects theirs. So we could probably actually just find one and have a look. Let's go back. I can just load a game from here. Uh, like these are the default ones. So I'd imagine there's probably going to be much scripting on them. Um, Let's go for, I'm almost a bit dubious of uh, loading up that really heavy one again. Not these, maybe much better. Tree of Dracula might be slightly better, slightly lighter. Let's see. I'm watching my CPU. Seems okay. Cool. This is the older version of the game. I actually played it recently. I don't know. Let's see. Is there any scripting anywhere? So I don't know what this is. It's a bit weird. <laughs> what on earth is this? This gigantic red thing. <laughs> um, is there a deck of cards somewhere? Let's see. Okay, it doesn't actually look like anyone's got... Oh no, here we go. Here's some scripting. So make all this object table is non-interactable, meaning they cannot be manipulated by, anyway by the player. Okay. Not sure of the reasoning, but you can see some examples here, there, and everywhere. I don't know if there's going to be any scripting here. Probably not. But we could add something if we really wanted to. Yeah, there's nothing. That's the global one again. Um, my main memory was a lot of tabletop simulator games don't have a tremendous amount of scripting. But something did all this to lay it out. So I thought, well, that's just the mod. Maybe you don't need to script that. Yeah. I don't know how much of it you actually need, but it can be quite powerful. You can see, yeah, it's not so much here, really. No. Maybe it's worth having a quick look if it's open. Okay, this is going to, we're going to get some uh, frame loss again on the stream. Here we go. Okay, not so bad that time. <laughs> um, 
what could we look at for example this is probably got something on it yeah there's a lot here yeah so that's set to not be draggable as we saw um oh wow yeah all sorts of so that's a very good example actually and i suppose in theory you could change this if you wanted to yeah there's a lot there um yep yep a lot. So you can go and dig in and look at some examples to see how they work. It's sort of hard to get your head around it. You're kind of used to seeing code as a project. This becomes a bit more like uh, some of the other streams I've done where you're looking at something like Unity. That is still an IDE, of course. You kind of, it's a weird mix here because you think of everything as an object and you actually have like live previewing in front of you. So it, it takes your head to, it takes some time to get um, your head around it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's quite cool. So I think that's probably good for now. So that's the basics. And you can see a very complicated example here. I go back to my stupidly simple example. I wonder if actually, whilst we're here, <laughs> I could uh, remind myself. Let's have a look at the old chip shop one, if it still works. I can't remember what I did. Oh yeah, here we go, it's still here. Wow, look at that. I don't know. Or maybe not, no, all the files don't exist anymore. I think I had this problem as well of getting all the the card to actually sit properly. So nothing's actually going to work because all the assets, image assets are long gone. I honestly don't even know what's on these cards. <laughs> but that's one I did in the past. <laughs> so there you go. All right. So that was a very, very getting started guide with Tabletop Simulator. When Daniel and I have created our own um, version ready for playtesting. We're still in our own very fast iterative uh, playtesting at the moment. Then um, we'll make sure I let you know that it's available. Actually, someone is asking me, I can give you a very, very quick preview. <laughs> Not much to look at right now. Um, whoops. Oh dear. There we go. Um, so. So the board is the probably the best example of the board at the moment is this kind of like world-like thing in these weird spheres and you're trying to recruit cards you put down here and then spread out from there. And then we have the, the cards here. You have um, lots and lots of base cards. It's a deck builder, lots of numbers, always a good sign of a game. And then the leaders here, they're the people you're trying to recruit and put into those spaces. I'm sure that all made perfect sense. <laughs> I have a physical prototype, but not with me. So I can't really show you. And that all made perfect sense, I'm sure. Uh, maybe this will help. There you go. That helps in a little bit. It's coming together. Eventually, we'll have a tabletop simulator version. But anyway, that was the first of one of my learning live streams, looking at the basics of how to create a game with tabletop simulator. If you enjoyed that, then keep an eye on wherever you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch, subscribe, leave a comment on this. Let me know your experiences. Have you created anything with Tabletop Simulator? What did you get up to? Did you create it? Um, is it published? Can we play it? Can people play it? Anything else, you can find my details at kristenschiller.com for everything else I work on. And that's it. That's it for now. Uh, next week, I am going to be back on Monday at 4 p.m. 1600 Central European time with a rebroadcast of the video that failed this Monday, which is Better Touch Tool, and specifically how I can use it to replace this little doodad I've been operating the whole time, my stream deck. That's what I'm going to be looking at. So that's going to be the next learning live stream. And keep an eye on YouTube, especially for my edited videos, which I'm working on a couple right now. And um, just subscribe to keep up with all those updates. But for now, this has been me, Christian Schiller, on a learning live stream. And thank you very much for joining me.